Hi everyone, this is Liang Mingpan from National University of Singapore. Today I'm going to introduce our work, Multi-Model Cooking Workflow Construction for Food Recipes. I will first do some introduction about the background. Nowadays, more and more people like to share their cooking recipes on the website. As shown in the left figure, a cooking recipe usually consists of multiple cooking steps, and each cooking step corresponds to one or more cooking actions. To understand how the food is prepared, it is important to understand the causal relations between cooking actions. For example, which cooking action should be done before another, and which two cooking actions can be done in parallel. For example, as shown in the right figure, watch the blueberries should be done before we put it in the pan, but watch the blueberries can be done in parallel with greasing the pan. By understanding all, the, all those causal relationships in a recipe, we can then convert a recipe from an, from an unstructured document into a structured graph that describes the temporal workflow of recipe as shown in the red, right figure. To build such a cooking workflow for food recipe, we need to detect whether two cooking steps are in parallel or in sequential. If two, working, if two cooking steps are in sequential, it means that we cannot perform one step without finishing the other. And if two cooking steps are in parallel, this means that these two steps are independent and can be performed at the same time. In this work, we argue that detecting such a relationship is not an easy task because it requires the multi-model information. That is, we find that the text descriptions and the cooking images usually plays a complementary role in detecting such a cause and effect relations. For example, as shown in the top figure, these two steps are actually in sequential. But if we judge only from the text, it is very hard to detect such relations because uh, in the first text, it says, uh, roll out the dough, and in the second step, it says, it's time to put the strawberries on. But uh, it does not say we should put on the strawberries on the dough. So it is very hard to detect these two steps are actually in sequential. But this information is very easy to be obtained from the cooking image because in the cooking image, we can see that the strawberries are put on the dots. And in the example at the bottom, these two steps are in parallel. This is uh, very hard to be judged from the pictures, but it is easy to be detected from the text because in the first step, it says in a large bowl, and in the second, it says in an other bowl. And if we can automatically build a multi-model cooking workflow for cooking for food recipe, it will have a wide applications. For example, it will benefit the cross-model retrieval and also can be used in food recommendation and recipe generation. And also it helps to learn better recipe representations because we now understand the inter we now understand the internal structure within a recipe. Currently there are very few related works of building cooking workflow. And here I will introduce two works. The first one is to build an ingredient level cooking workflow, which means that each node in the cooking workflow is an ingredient or an action. But building such a fine grained cooking workflow is very hard because it is highly dependent on the performance of NLP tools, such as name identity recognition and dependency parsing. And another work tries to build an instruction level cooking workflow, which has the same objective as our work. In this work, it uses handcrafted features and the, the SVM to detect whether two cooking step is in parallel or in sequential. The existing works uh, has two major problems. The first one is uh, both of these two works use the text only recipe, which means that they do not use the uh, cooking images. And also, uh, they both lack of a large scale data set. So they can only use handcrafted features to do that. To address the problems of existing works, in this paper, we are trying to build a large scale multi-model data set for cooking workflow construction. We name it as MMRES. In the following, I will introduce how we construct this data set. 
So in general, MMRES is a very large data set with more than 9,000 recipes. And each recipe has multiple cooking steps. And each cooking step has both the text de description and the multiple cooking images. More importantly, for each cooking recipe, we have a human annotated cooking workflow graph, such as this one shown in the left. In the this right. paper, we compare our data sets with other data sets for cooking workflow construction. In terms of the number of recipes, our data sets has more than 9,000 recipes, while the others only have a few hundred. And with the modality, only our data set has, has the multimodal information, which has both the text instructions we and collect also the, the recipes image. of our data set from these two data sources, the instructable and the old recipes. Both of these two are very famous cooking sharing websites. By crawling the recipes from these two websites, we now have a raw data set, which, uh, which contains more than 30,000 recipes for instructable and more than 60,000 recipes, recipes for collected recipes. from these two data sources show different properties. For instructable, the texts are usually noisy because it is proposed by the users. But uh, the instructable has the cooking images associated with each cooking step. For all recipes, the texts are cleaner, but there is no cooking image associated with the step level. Once the recipes from these two data sources do not have an annotated recipe structure. We process the data following these three steps. So first, we do some data pre-processing. Because the recipes uh, extracted from all recipes website do not have cooking images associated with each cooking step, but they do have very well-made cooking videos. So we extract the keyframes from the videos as the cooking images. And we also did some data filtering. We select the cooking recipes that has large number of steps so that they can have more complex structures. And we also split the step in the instructable to make it more fine granted. In the second step, we ask the human annotators to do the text image alignment. Uh, because in the first step, uh, the Cooking images extracted from all recipes uh, are not associated with their corresponding text step. So we ask the human annotators to align the cooking image to its corresponding text. And in this step, we also ask the human annotators to annotate those sentences that do not describe a cooking procedure. And in the final step, we manually annotate the cooking workflow for each recipe. So after the data pre-processing, we now have very clean text for instructable, and we also have uh, cooking images for the old recipes. But the problem is uh, the cooking images are not associated with their uh, corresponding text. So in stage two, we ask the human annotators to perform the text image alignment. We have built a, our own annotation platform for this, and we formulate this problem as a multiple choice task. And uh, here is an example of our annotation plan for. So given an instruction, uh, instruction text, uh, we have uh, multiple candidate images shown at the bottom. Uh, and the annotator is required to select uh, which image is associated with uh, this text. And, uh, and if uh, no picture present is related, then the annotator should choose this uh, option. And uh, we also ask, uh, ask the annotators to decide uh, whether this text is, uh, is about the cooking procedure or not. So sometimes the uh, user may propose the texts that are not related. For example, uh, I, fin I finally finished the cooking, uh, please enjoy it. So if, uh, if the annotator encounters such a text, then you will choose uh, this option that is that this sentence is not related to the cooking procedure. After this stage, all the cooking images are now associated with their corresponding text description. So in the next stage, we are going to manually annotate the cooking workflow. So in this stage, uh, we have more than 9,000 uh, cooking recipes and we hire 22 students from National University of Singapore to label the data. And the whole annotation process lasts for more than one month. We also build a annotation platform uh, to do that. 
as, is, as shown in this figure, uh, in the annotation platform, the, the left side shows the current uh, recipes. And on the right side, uh, it is the uh, unfinished uh, cooking workflow. So the annotators can manipulate uh, the right side to build a complete uh, cooking workflow. So the annotators can add a link, add a link between two nodes uh, and also uh, to delete an existing link. So after building the entire workflow graph, uh, the annotator can click the submit button to proceed to the next recipe. So here is the general process of how we build our data set. And this table shows some key stat statistics of our data set. And we are, I will talk about some key numbers. So first for the recipes, the total number of recipes is 9,850. And uh, uh, it comes from uh, both these two sources and have a balanced size. And the average number of steps uh, for each recipe uh, is more than 11. Uh, so uh, almost each recipe has a complex uh, cooking workflow. And for the step, uh, the, the percentage of cooking steps are more than uh, 73%. Uh, and, and also the average number of sentences for each step is only 1.2. This means that uh, we have a very fine granted step. And also uh, the cooking images associated with each step, uh, the average number is 2.0. So, so this means that in average, uh, uh, every step is associated with uh, at least two images. After we build our uh, MMREST data set, uh, we propose the encoder-decoder based model uh, to do the cooking, work, cooking workflow construction task. So here is the general framework of our model. Our model is an encoder-decoder framework, which has these three components, the cooking step encoder, recipe encoder, and the cultural relation decoder. So the input of our model uh, is a complex recipe. And each recipe has multiple cooking steps. And each cooking step uh, has both uh, the instructional text and also the cooking images. The cooking step encoder uh, tries to encode a cooking step as a vector. By doing this, we need to encode both the cooking images and the text instructions. For cooking images, well, we use the ResNet features as the visual features. For the text instructions, we use pre-trained BERT to extract the textual features. The, re the resulting visual features and text features are, are then go through a feedforward network uh, to transform and then the two vectors are concatenated to feed to an other feedforward network to get the final embedding of the cooking step. We then sequentially send the encoded uh, cooking step uh, into the recipe encoder. The recipe encoder uh, is a, a transformer-based network which have, uh, which have three components for each layer. So first, uh, it will go through a multi-head self-attention uh, to learn the dependencies between each steps. And then these features are then go through a fusion gate and a layer normalization to get the final context-aware uh, step embeddings. Then at the decoder side, the cooking step embeddings are sent in sequential again to the decoder. And, the, and for each step, TI, it will first go through the multi-head cross attention and then go through a fusion gate and, norm, and a layer normalization uh, to get the uh, output embedding. This output embedding will then go through a pointer layer, uh, which will attend to its previous steps. Mm, so uh, the one that receives the most attention will be, will be regarded uh, as its prerequisite that is uh, uh, its parent node uh, in the cooking workflow. Okay, so finally, I will introduce the evaluation of our model. So for the evaluation metrics, we use the precision, recall, and a fine score of predicting the edges with respect to the ground truth. And for the baselines, we choose three groups of models. 
the text-only models, the image-only models, and the models that use the multi-model information. And here is the performance comparison between different models. And we have three major observations. So first, we find that in general, the models that use both the text and the image information performs better uh, than the single model uh, models. So this shows that uh, in detecting the, uh, the causal relations, uh, it is better uh, to use the multimodal information. And also a second one is that uh, we find that in general, the text information plays a more important role than the image features. And finally, we find that in general, the neural models works better than rule-based models because uh, it can uh, learn some high-level interactions between the steps. And finally, here are some result visualizations. So on the left, it shows the uh, a cooking workflow annotated by human. And on the right side, it shows the predictions of our model. Uh, you can see that it only make, uh, makes the mis one mistake. And here are uh, the model predictions for the two baselines. So on the left, it only used the text instructions. And on the right, it only used the visual features. We find that if we only use the visual features, it tends to make more mistakes. That's all for this work. Thanks.